This is a mature deer that was drug out of the woods on the approach road to my residential neighborhood, which is narrow, and it backs up to about 1,500 acres of um, uh, state conservation park, so we have lots of deer. What I wanted to point out here in terms of realistic texture, coloration, and the form that this thing takes when it, as it decays, if you're, into doing, if you're into doing some accurate portrayal of decay, then uh, this is a very good example for you to see the, the uh, relationship of the leftover hair or fur to the skin itself. And then the coloration, of course, of the bone. I don't have any idea how old this is, but its uh, carcass has probably been here for a while. Um, I don't know if the video will give you the richness of these colors, but you can see the tanned, uh, I guess the leather surface of the skin. And uh, there's a stress point there, and you see how that highlights yellow. And then the rest of it is very, very dark. And as far as the skull goes, well, the skull is a nice color. Of course, it hasn't been bleached, not it hasn't been exposed to the elements that long. And what you're getting is pretty much the natural bone color minus the skin. So you can see if you're trying to accomplish realistic, you have lots and lots of colors and tones and textures, and you may have some layering of colors. Uh, you'll put down a base layer of tone, and then uh, you could either uh, put down your darker layer or your lighter layer on top, and then just rub it off before it dries to get the variant. We'll step over here and look at the rib cage. This is um, this is about the size of a human rib cage. Uh, this is a full-grown, mature doe. Uh, it's about as big as a doe is going to get, but you can see the same variant there. All the skin, of course, is gone, and you can see the relativity of the tone from the dark to the light. And you can see a little bit of the the skin that's left in some of the areas and if you come all the way to here it's kind of interesting to note you go from raw bone to skin with flesh all the way to the remaining fur and then down to the what looks to be a fully preserved uh, leg that uh, you know has not suffered any decay at all and that would be the same with both of these and there you can see the muscle layer and the tissue there you can see the bone again, and there's the hip bone just for an anatomical reference. And let's spin around to this side, and I'm going to show you here. You know, sometimes when we corpse a cage, we leave some of the some of the uh, flesh on, and then close the gap between. But you see how cool this looks when you leave when you have a bone that's fully fleshed off, and then you have the gap between, and then you've got the skin. And then you move as you move up, you've got more skin, and then you've got some hair and a little bit of flesh up in here. So that gives it a full, realistic look. Try to turn this thing around a little bit and show you a different view. And you see how your your decay is mostly black. And a lot of corpse preparations, people try to use too much red, which is very unrealistic. But uh, in terms of the movie sets and the prop quality, I think it meets the expectation what the set designers and the script writers think that the public interprets when they see a dead body is that you would see a lot of, of you know, richness in color and tone. And it does make it look a little bit more interesting, but you can see the muscular leg exposed there, which is still pretty much intact. The uh, beetles and the maggots haven't gotten to it yet. Um, but this is what it actually looks like. So in a, in a death environment, even in a human sense, this is probably a lot of what a natural decomposition is going to look like after a couple of weeks. So this gives you something to work with. Notice also something interesting. If, you, if you're going to create a corpse or a death scene, you got to pay particular attention to the surrounding. You can see where this thing has laid there for a while. It's completely killed everything around it. And the decomposed matter is sort of spread out around a periphery. And then widen it up here a little bit. You can see it goes from basically a black uh, spill spot all the way out to the green surrounding vegetation. And so this is what it looks like in a larger sense as you approach it.
And of course there's the road that leads to the margin, which is dark, that leads to the carcass, which is laying there. Hopefully this little study guide helps you as you prepare your corpses and you do your set decoration and your design.